everybody. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I don't know when you watch this, but today is the first cold, blisteringly cold, windy day of the season. So it's kind of cold outside today, but we're kind of toasty here in my studio right now. Um, if you've never seen me before, I want to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Paul. I'm a visual artist. I've been doing that for well, well over 50 years, and I've been teaching for a long, long time, too. Um, thanks for stopping by. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one type of art um, that actually I didn't really, really like very much when it came out, but it's called pop art. And some of you may already know what that is. Uh, I called this segment, this, this video, the pop art revolution because that's really kind of what it had what what occurred back in the late 1950s and all through the 60s it was a type of art that kind of glorified real commercial things that were going on in our culture at the time you may see this here and you're going why does he have a, um, a soup can um, here this is to kind of illustrate what pop art started out as it was kind of a, a revolution against what the art world was doing at the time and so there were a few artists at the time um, like um, Andy Warhol, um, there were, I would say there were uh, Lichtenstein, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, uh, who, what they did is they took normal, regular things that we see, like commercial stuff, like soup and, and soap and stuff that you saw on television and stuff, and what they did is they created these real simple ideas and developed the style that kind of glorified in a weird way. I know this sounds kind of weird because it was weird to me at the time too. Um, but it was it was like everything was like art was real serious, and you know there was the expressionists that were there at the time, and you know doing the, all this abstract work, and a few people, a few artists at the time started doing this real commercial kind of stuff. Uh, almost like uh, like commercials, like TV commercials or web commercials and stuff like that. And what they did is they raised it to an art level. And that's what pop art uh, t started out to be. And so, as I said before, one of the big guys at the time that kind of, when you look up pop art, Andy Warhol is one of the guys that pop up first. He's considered kind of like the father of pop art. And so he used to do illustrations and stuff uh, for shoe, the, the shoe uh, uh, store in New York City. And, uh, and slowly but surely, he started doing this weird stuff. And trust me, even at the time, it blew people's mind, not necessarily because it was such perfect, great art. It was like, why is he painting pictures of Campbell's soup cans? Uh, I just read the other day that a, one of the original soup cans, I think it was chicken noodle soup, a painting, a small painting of his just sold for a million dollars. So that'll kind of tell you that's kind of interesting. So commercialization, what he did is he picked out, not just him, but all of them at the time, they kind of picked out things that were, that you saw every day, you know, a pair of socks or what have you. And they painted them and they did them in such a way that it was, uh, people laughed, but at the same time, people bought too. So today what I want you to do is I want you to think of some kind of commercial product that you maybe use. It could be kind of a, it could be a stick of de deodorant. It could be a shampoo bottle. It could be a perfume bottle. It could be a can. It could be a cereal box. 
something simple like that, a, an everyday object. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw that one object and fill your page completely right? Because that's kind of what they did. Roy Lichtenstein, on the other hand, he kind of stole from comic books. Uh, all of his work, when you look at one individual painting, it's almost like looking at a close-up of a picture out of a, a, out of a comic book. And again, I'm not saying that you need to love this stuff, but it does have a place in the history of art because what happened after that, like I said a moment ago, it was a springboard for everybody going, well, if Andy Warhol can do this kind of stuff that I don't even like and become this major, major artist and sell millions and millions of dollars, maybe it, I can do kind of the same thing. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to do a, a Campbell soup can, that's what Andy Warhol was really mostly known for. And so what I started out is something really, really simple. I'll do it again. Uh, let me get a darker pencil so maybe we can... And so what I did is to make the soup can, what I did is I just made A rectangle. See this rectangle? Everybody can draw a rectangle. Here's the rectangle. But to make it into a cylinder, you have to you have to give a roundness to make it a can. So the first one I did is I rounded off the can like this. Alright? And then what I did this shape right here, this line right here, I went up here and I made the same kind of shape. I replicated the same kind of shape here. And in the back, I just reversed that shape and made it go up like that. So here we've made a cylinder, and this is pretty easy. And of course, instead of putting the line straight this way and straight this way, I want to try to create the roundness of what the can is. So instead of just doing a straight line for the label, I rounded this label this way, and I copied this line here to be up here. So here's kind of like the label that's going on. Um, it was an interesting time during the 1960s uh, fash, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was influencing the, um, oh, I don't know, the everything that was happening uh, in the world, and especially because pop art is really an American product. It, it, it happened in America first. Um, and so that's what I want you to do. I want you to think in terms of um, glorifying a just ordinary commercial product that you use every day. I think that would be kind of fun to do. I think I just messed something up. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what I talked, uh, what I said this earlier, and I want to kind of emphasize this even more, and uh, uh, the commercialization of art that was like the main, one of the main things in pop art, that um, they took commercial products and commercial ideas and instead of lifting it to, to make it a, you know, a painting of a, a major battle back in Rome or what have you, they just took these real simple things and made this artwork and I tell you what I lived through that period of time and it was the wave of, of that genre that that kind of work was huge and again as I said earlier I didn't even like it I thought what a cop out he's just copping out you know but in actuality it was uh, uh, you know sometimes with art and kinds of art 
right? Uh, it takes a while for everybody to get it. Like when we think about another genre of art, which is the Impressionist, and we think in ter mostly because of, because of, a lot of it happened in France first. It's a kind of a French-born uh, type of uh, art, the Impressionism. But at the time they were making them, especially the first 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, it was scandalous. I mean, it was like, oh my God, this is not art. The world's going to go to hell in a handbasket. You know, it's going to be just nuts. And of course, now we look back at it as a, a phenomenal period of time of, of, of art that is that we call the Impressionist. And it was the same thing back then. I saw people laugh. I, I, I remember reading about uh, art scholars at the time that was going, oh my God, this stuff is trash. Nobody's going to love this stuff. And so the reason I'm making a point of that is that the type of art that you want to create that's in here, it's not something that somebody did 50 years ago. But what you want to do, don't scoff at it. Don't let people go, oh, no, that's not art. Uh, oh, that's not real art. I love that. Don't, it was a matter of just do what you think is real for you. And I think that's really important. And of course, one of the characteristics of pop art was they may have been very, very simple in some ways, but they were bold with color. That was a hallmark, meaning that was like an important part of the pop art culture was these gorgeous, gorgeous uh, colors. So anyway, uh, I've got to run, but... I uh, hope that you learned a little something on that. And again, be you. That is so important. And as you grow as artists or creatives, you're that you're going to realize how important it is to take your own path. Learn from the past. It's good to learn and know what came before you. But do your do you. And I think that's a really important issue. Uh, anyway, until next time, have a great day, and if it's still cold, bundle up, and peace. I'll see you next time.